Alright guys, I got a lot going on today. Uh, for starters, if you remember my last video, I tried to hook up the wideband, but the uh, O2 sensor was too far back in the downpipe. It was too close to fresh air, so it was going full lean. So I'm going to have to uh, take it off. going to have to take it to my buddy Stevie at Wicked Fab again so I can uh, fix it or put it in a better location. I don't know if you remember, but as he was actually fixing the downpipe, he said, hey, I could put a, a bung for the O2 sensor in there. I was like, nah, that's all right, it's all right. but I should have listened to him. So the way the bung is hot, you're not going to put a sensor in. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Huh. We can add one if you want to add one. I got some. No, nah, that's all right. It's all right. So uh, I'm going to go up there, have him fix it up. Okay, so I got the O2 sensor or the the wideband sensor mounted in the in the spot right there. That's pretty much exactly where I wanted it. Going straight back, there's enough room to clear the trans. So right now, I'm just trying to get it to read, register on the gauge. So right now, I'm about to fire it up for the first time and see if it actually reads without going full lean like it was before. Okay, please say something that is not just full lean. I'm ready to start tuning this car. Okay. Ooh. I guess they're running pretty rich. Okay, it's reading. So before it was just going full in without reading anything, so right now it's actually registering, which is good. Awesome, so now I can actually go in and start tuning. Okay, so I got the car fired up and right away I can tell that it's uh, it's running too lean. It's almost maxing out the air fuel. So I've been going in here and kind of just bumping it up. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go 51. I'm gonna click right as I'm staring at it so you can see the live change. I'm gonna click it right. Now it's writing and there we have instant change. That looks pretty good right there. Of course, you want it to be around 14 to 7. Um, I, I don't have an IAC valve, so I'm like manually adjusting the idle screw. So it looks like I actually need to bring it down. Looks like with the right air fuel, it actually idled up a little bit. So I need to bring that back down. All right, so I set that idle screw just a little bit. Uh, turn it just a little bit just to bring the idle back down. Let's see where it lands now. It was like at 1,500. Uh, anywhere around 1,000 is probably cool. Uh, yeah, it's about 900 to a thousand Ooh, and the air fuel at that range is actually a little bit uh, It's a little rich just a little bit I'm gonna make a small little adjustment uh, let's See up to a thousand rpms I'll go 1250 rpms and up that Or deduct I'm sorry because it's running rich um, I'm gonna say 3%. Let's see what that does. Now I'm gonna click right as I'm looking at the gauge. And land it at about 14.4. 4, 14. Yeah, that's probably that's good enough right there. Okay, so I got the idle looking good right there. At 5,000 RPM, it's sitting about 14.7, 14.6, going up and down, fluctuating. I've had this issue where it bounces like at 1500 RPMs and I've kind of had this idea that it might be like lean at 1500 and that, that's why it's bouncing. Yes, yeah, so right there it kind of hesitates and bounces at 1500. Yes, 
So 1500, it's got a weird little hesitation. About 13 inches of vacuum. So I'm gonna go on these tables here. So it's at 13 inches of vacuum. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at 14 inches at about 1250 RPM. And I'm gonna add some fuel in there cause it's going like max lean. I'm gonna see if that helps that uh, bouncing right there. Or like hunting, it's I don't, I'm not quite sure what you would call that. Nope, still doing it. So I noticed something pretty strange. I, I was kind of playing around and I went to a P72 base map. Um, well, I'm not gonna do it because it'll erase these settings. But I went to a P72 and kind of got the idle somewhat tuned in and now it doesn't hesitate at 1500. It's a smooth acceleration it doesn't get stuck there at 15. so what if it's just something like in the timing table that's different on the p72 around this area i'm not quite sure what the difference is it just likes the base map for the p72 better like once all i did is i i had to actually add some fuel to get the idle at uh around 14.7 and once i did that it's a uh, it's it revs up smoothly throughout the rpm range Yeah. Hmm. I might actually try this P72 and start tuning from here. For whatever reason, people like to use the P30 versus the P72. I know with the 72s, like they have the, the butterfly valves, and you'll get like an extra check engine light, throw out a code for that, but I don't really see an issue with that. But for whatever reason, it likes this base map better. It doesn't get stuck at 1500 RPMs. I might try like copying the timing tables and fuel tables onto the P30 map, but I don't. I don't really see why it's necessary. I think I'm just going to start with this P72 base map and start tuning it from here. Um, the timing is pretty advanced. And if you notice in my other video, the OBDs run like 12 degrees and um, about four degrees. I'm going to bring it about four degrees down. I have to sit about 12.5. And let's see what this does when I, when I click right. See like a, a live change. Yeah, you can tell it idled down a little bit. So yeah, 12 degrees. And from this point on, that's super low. I know like the, the, the Y8s and stuff, man, they like to have like a 26, 27 degrees up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in 26 degrees. Click right. And then I'm gonna highlight the entire map and smooth it out with the S. And I think I'm gonna click right again. All right. After I adjusted the timing, it, it's actually running a little bit leaner. That's interesting. So I'm gonna add one more little, let's see. That's better. So adjusting the timing actually affected the air fuel just a little bit. Okay, well, I mean, this is just like a starting point. Just getting, it's like terrible weather right now. I, I wish I could drive the car around and make some pulls and stuff, but it's just, it's not, the weather isn't right for that right now. I'm gonna have to wait another day. Hopefully tomorrow it clears up, but it's been raining and pretty soggy for a while now. So at least I got the idle pretty decent and I got the air fuel, uh, I got the wide band gauge reading like, they, like it's supposed to. So, all right, hopefully tomorrow I'll hook up, or maybe I could hook up that GM3 bar and uh, start making some pulls into boost if everything goes well. So, all right, if you like the video, like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.